On this episode of Hey, Hey, Linda Purrs, Linda interviews Chris Hughes and David Bell, The Hughes Effect. Enjoy. Here we are today in Nashville, and we're going to be interviewing The Hughes Effect. We're going to find out together what that is. And these two gentlemen, we have David Bell and we have Chris Hughes. They have relocated from Arkansas to the great state of Tennessee and more specifically to Nashville. So we're going to find out some things about their music journey and how, what got them to this point. So thank you guys for coming up to do this interview. Thanks for having us. I, I really enjoy it, and I, I enjoy getting to know you guys as people, you know, because there are millions of songwriters around, and, and everybody shuffles around and tries to be heard. and But underneath all the songs, there are, you know, people that, and people that lo relocated here, you know, and that, that in itself is a big deal. Yeah. You know, to make the decision to come here, you know, it's kind of like uh, you've heard the the um, saying, all roads lead to Rome. Well, all songwriters want to be in Nashville, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I don't really, you know, Austin has a really good scene, music scene, and there's there's other places, of course, there's Memphis and everything, but there, for songwriters, it just seems Nashville is the draw. And you just, and it's not just country, you know, there is yeah. every, everything here. And, and that's, I mean, when I, so when I hear about Hughes effect, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so, um, how did you come up with that name for you guys? So it started out as obviously I'm Chris Hughes. I'm the, the namesake of the Hughes effect. Okay. Um, so it started out as my solo project. And um, I wanted something that could be a band or that could be just me. Um, and so I was trying, just trying out a lot of different things, trying to come up with something. And I, um, I really like science. I'm a kind of a sciencey guy. And so I wanted something that sounded vaguely scientific. It does. Um, and so, uh, one day I just, like, the idea came, like, the Hughes Effect, that sounds vaguely scientific, mm -hmm. and it has my name in it. Um, I would have gone, like, with just Chris Hughes, but um, there's a lot of Chris Hugheses, and yeah. and there's a lot of, like, there's Chris Hughes music, and Chris Hughes this, like, I, so I wanted something that still had my name, but that would allow me to carve my own niche in the crowded world of people releasing music to streaming and all of that. So, right. so that's kind of how I came up with it. Well, that's interesting. And I'm glad you had that foresight that, you know, that could be you as a solo artist or that could be you as a band. Yeah. And, um, and that's good because you don't know, you don't know sometimes what it's going to evolve to. And, and sometimes you might do solo shows and then you might be with a band, you yeah. know, you, you know, yeah. cause well, I knew what I wanted to do, yeah. which was to be in a band. Okay. Um, even though at the time, you know, I, but I also was like starting to record and release music. So I wanted to, I didn't want to wait to have a band to re record and release music, mm -hmm. but I knew that having a band was ultimately what I wanted to do. So I tried to set myself up for like where I was going and not just where I was at the moment. So it's fortunate that you were able to move out here. So you got a band member to come with you. Yeah. And so David, how did that, how did you become a band member with the Hughes effect? <sighs> Chris found me on the side of the road one day. Oh, oh no. Oh, um, <laughs> oh, and you brought him home. Yeah, he brought me home. He fed me. I asked yeah. if he keeps keep him. me on a leash. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's very giving with his treats. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Chris put out an ad on Facebook, and um, it was really describing of like an indie sort of sound, a sound that I've been looking for personally for a while. And I listened to some of his music on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is just great stuff. Real Beatles-y kind of thing there. Real, like, pop sounding, but could be, like, just great music. Yeah. I saw a lot of potential in Chris, and so I just decided I to... Like it. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need that. I decided to come aboard. That that's a wonderful story. So, um, but and now you play bass yes. for the band. Yeah. <laughs> and where um, is that the instrument? You, like you chose that one day, or you gravitated towards it, or? Um, you could say I gravitated towards it. I started off playing guitar, just like everyone else. Um, one day I. I used to be with a band like about five or six years ago and we were short a bass player for a show. So I filled in on it oh. and I got so many compliments, which I'd never gotten with my guitar playing before. Um, and so that just sort of started a passion for bass for me. You know, I, st I still love to play guitar and, you know, I still like to write with guitar and all those yeah. things, but he's a great guitar player. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Glad someone thinks so. But um, <laughs> um, I feel like I'm really strong when it comes to playing bass. And, you know, nobody really wants just another guitar player in their band. They want someone who can really add some dynamics to the sound. Mm -hmm. And I thought with me joining on as bass, uh, that would give it sort of the depth that it needed. Yeah, yeah, the bass definitely brings out the beat, the funk, yeah. <laughs> you know, all those things. And you can even slap on the guitar once in a while and do, you know, rhythm lead and um, mm -hmm. rhythm. Yeah. You know, you can you you be flexible that way. Yeah, it helps with recording because we both we both record guitar parts and stuff. And yeah. So, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't think we've ever performed with two guitars before, besides our very first gig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you could just can add some variation at some yeah. point, yeah. you know, to your performance. So how is your um, creativity going since you've moved here? Are you you writing songs? I, actually, I shouldn't even ask you that, because I know you're a power songwriter. <laughs> I write two or three a week, typically. Uh -huh. um, not good ones. Just, just, to, <laughs> but well, just you gotta keep it, it going. You yeah. had a good one yeah. recently, but occasionally, occasionally they come out good. Yeah. Um, it's kind of you know just quantity. If you if you write enough, eventually one of them's gonna be good. Wow, that sounds good. So, and that's kind of what I go for. I just, but yeah, I try to write. Uh, I try to write every day. That's my goal anyway, but it doesn't always happen. But it usually comes together about two or three times a week. And then you said you wrote uh, songs too? Yeah, I write. Um, not as often as Chris does. Um, I don't think I've written a song in about a month. <laughs> I got a new notebook recently, and I told myself I'm, I'm going to do what Chris does. I'm going to write a song every day. <laughs> and then that just plummeted. <laughs> So I do like to write, but it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Well, you have some really strong talent here between the two of you. And um, now the, the type of sound you said you were, you mentioned earlier, kind of the indie sound, which if somebody doesn't know what indie is, that's like the independent artist. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets its name. You know, it sounds it sounds like India or something, you know, but it's um, but that can mean any style of music yeah mm -hmm. so what what range is your music falling into in your writing um rock i mean it's we're very inspired by 80s through 2000s rock yeah not just um you know heavy stuff like nirvana but also things like radiohead rem uh you know just bands that love to make a noise yeah yeah, well, that's yeah. A, a lot of our influences are not as mainstream mm -hmm. you know so um more of the alternative rock you know indie rock yeah <laughs> well, that's, well that's great yeah. you know it gives people an idea of what yeah. you do yeah, yeah. so it's kind of a you know um peppy music and 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 has a little nostalgia to it, you yeah. Know, for people who like that era, and that's that's often, I I well, it was about a year ago. I went locally. There was a Motown show, and I grew up on Motown, so I was all excited about going to that. And I, but I always kept wondering, well, why can't there just be new Motown? Mm -hmm. You know, why can't 
there be new songs? I want Motown. I, you know, I want new. I mean, I love the old, but why can't it just keep going? Yeah. And then I hear this all the time because I go to the Troubadour a lot, and they're traditional country. This new stuff isn't any good, you know, which is just different. But why can't we make new traditional country? Yeah. You know, I, they don't. They just play traditional country. You know, maybe once in a while I hear somebody in the style of, but a actually, you you know, you don't. It's just traditional music or then you're new, you know. But why mm. can't it be that style, like like what you're doing? That's fun music, you know. Yeah. And um, so I, I like that you're doing that because I, I, some of the stuff, like I said, I like, they, they don't do it anymore. And I'm like, why not? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wish I could. I, I just, I love Motown. I don't know how to write Motown. <laughs> And speaking of writing, that's where we met. Yeah. At the Songwriters Sanctuary in um, Jostin, uh, Tennessee, which is just west of here, a little northwest of Nashville. It was a beautiful location. It was. And we both took that step to go see what this was about. Yeah. And we ended up writing a song together. Yes, we did. So that was my very first co write with anybody. And like you said, he's kind of a power writing machine and he has a really good system for writing and he was a you were able to teach me that yeah and I, and I think it's fascinating and it works and it's a great system and um, I, I think I was very fortunate to meet you and and we produced a song together you did yeah. uh, that was that was exciting for me because that was my first ever co-write and um, I, th I think it went it went well for us, you know. Absolutely. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and you never I, know. I know. Well, it, it, it's just now I know what co writing's about. So, uh, that do you guys ever co write or you just have done separate? A little bit ish. A um, little collaboration or something. Our latest song, Lonely Satellite, we wrote together. Yeah. Um, I think that's the first song that we wrote together. That's the first song that we okay. wrote together. Um, yeah. Not much else, though. No, mostly it's I'll write a song, or he'll write a song, and then um, we just go from bring there. it to you know bring it to we we make a demo, um, and the demo is just you know acoustic guitar and voice, and then we start layering instruments on top of it. And it becomes a Hughes effect song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. And I recently just listened to that Lonely Satellite. I enjoyed it very much. And um, hope. And we're gonna have a couple songs tagged to this interview. Yeah. I hope that might be. It one will of be. Them. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. That'll be one of them. I enjoyed that. So when people, if they wanted to hear your music and find out what the Hughes effect is really about, where can they hear it? Where can they get in touch with you? Sure. So we're uh, we have music on all the streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, yeah, Deezer, mm -hmm. Snapchat, yep. YouTube, yeah, Tidal, <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> yeah, wherever wherever you find music, um, we're there, and okay. you just look up the Hughes Effect, um, and we're the only one. <laughs> so you'll find us, uh, and also on uh, any social media platform, we have profiles where the Again, the use effect. Just look um, for this guy's face. <laughs> uh, and we also have a website, um, thehuseeffect.com. So I try to keep it simple. Yeah. Like, you just got to remember one thing, the yeah. use effect. Use effect. And that's with the E. <laughs> e you'll see that. Yeah. Now, um, are you, do you like to want to play for parties? Are you want to do gigs of some sort? Are you mostly going to songwriter rounds? Or what's your, your goal right now? We'd love to do gigs. Yeah, we'll okay. play anywhere that people want to hear music. Okay. We're willing to play. Yeah, I, you know, um, you know, we play most, I mean, we can play all original shows. We, we have lots of original songs, but we also know a lot of covers. We've, um, you know, in Little Rock, uh, before we moved here, um, we, most of the gigs there are primarily cover gigs because that's right. just kind of how it works there. Lower broad is that um, too. And so, um, so we know a lot of cover songs and we can learn them pretty easily too. So that's not really what we're trying to do. We're not really trying to be a cover band, uh -huh. but you know, if you need three hours of music build up, we can do that. We have done that. All we, right. We do so. 
And and sometimes as long as you let us play some of our originals too. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I I encourage original songs and songwriters. Yeah. That's who I reach out to when I do my shows. But I I also think you know originals sprinkled with a couple covers make for a good set. Yeah, we always in any of our sets we're going to play at least a couple cover songs. Yeah, you know they just they just um because they're getting used to your sound. It sounds kind of familiar. They like it. They like the beat, and then they hear. And it's brand new to people. Yeah. But then they hear a song. Well, that one sounds familiar. They know that one yeah. too. That's cool. But then yeah. they're back to the originals. Well, that sounds good too. Yeah. You know. And there's just some songs that we just love to play. Yeah. And so. So if you could play up to three hours, so you could do festivals, you could do yeah backyard barbecues. We'll do any of it. We have yeah. we have no. We um, have no shame. <laughs> no one say shame. Uh, but we have, it's true though, yeah. we have no shame. <laughs> well, <Right. laughs> now, um, if they were to, how can they best contact you if they want to have you come over? Sure. Um, you can, uh, re- again, any of the social media, you can reach out to us. Also, you can email chris at thehugheseffect.com. Um, and that, I get that email on my phone. Okay, so, so that's probably the best way to email, yeah. just if they want to have yeah. you play. Which, you know, um, it's a fun it's a fun day when you can, you know, have a barbecue and have some friends over and have some kicking yeah. music going on. And we have, uh, we have a PA system, and like, we're self-sufficient, so right. we have everything we need to, yeah. if somebody has a barbecue and they want music and... You know, we're, yeah. we have everything so we need you, to set you up So you call play. these guys and, have you know, don't just have a plain old barbecue. Have some music with it and yeah. give them a call and listen to their songs. So we look forward to see where you guys are going and happy you've made it to Nashville. I'm happy I've met both of you guys. Yeah. So we're thanks a lot here. for coming here for this Thank interview. You. Thank, Thank you, you for David. having us. Oh, yeah, this has been great.
indestructible No one can reach me here Feels like I'm untouchable My mission is unclear Let me A one, two, one, two, three, four.
This episode of Hey Hey Linda Purrs is sponsored by... Come on down to Grandpa's Music at 1033 Park Street in Westmoreland. Live bluegrass, country, and gospel music every Saturday night. Shows start at 6 p.m. and admission is $8. First Fridays, we feature karaoke and Grandpa's Music Jam Session 10 to 2 p.m. on the second and fourth Tuesday. New and seasoned musicians are always welcome for music lessons, so bring the whole family. Grandpa's Music at 1033 Park Street in Westmoreland.